Hey, this is Ryan from Dakota Angler and Outfitter, and today we're going to be tying a Kong pike fly. I've got a 4 aught Gamagatsu B10S hook in the vise, and we're using 100 denier Semperfly Nano Silk Thread. Start your thread at the front of the hook, trim off your excess, and most of this fly is going to be tied on the probably the front third of the hook or so, so you don't need to go back real far. Maybe go just a little over a third of the way back. And then take some bucktail. You don't need a huge piece of it, but I mean enough to kind of create a nice prop for the rest of your materials. So maybe like a matchstick compressed with the bucktail squeezed together, about the diameter of a matchstick is good. Take that, pull the long fibers out of it, and then comb out the short. And you want this to be, it doesn't really matter how long this is, but I try and make it maybe three and a half, four inches. It's just going to be kind of a base for the rest of your materials to be tied around just to keep the fly, have a big profile in the water. So take it and you're going to reverse tie it. To kind of even it up in your hand. Spread it pretty evenly around the hook shank. And do a couple loose wraps. Three maybe, and then just kind of make sure it's all pretty evenly distributed and then flare it Oops, cut some of it there yeah that worked out alright though so trim off your excess your butt ends here and I don't take a lot of time making these try and be real pretty you're not gonna really ever see any part of this part of the fly anyways all right so then take push this all back and you're gonna make just a little thread dam in front of it just to make it, you want it to be about a 45 degree angle or so just kind of make a nice nice tapered little thread dam in front of the bucktail there yeah, that's about right. And just make sure it's doesn't have to be perfectly even, but make sure it's spread fairly evenly around the shank of the hook. So now we're gonna take some Magnum Flashaboo. I, I like doing two colors on mine. Just kind of gives the fly a little more depth, I think. And then also what I do is take so when you cut it. I mean, it's obviously a flat cut there. Take and stagger all the ends of these. And then you're going to tie it in in the center. So maybe 60 40, put 60% back and leave 40% in the front. And kind of spread it around the hook. I just kind of loose wrap it a couple times and just spread it around the hook with your finger. And then fold the rest of it back. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's nice to have it so it's pretty evenly. Distribute it around the hook. Like that. And if you have any stragglers, I take and trim them just so the fly is kind of a reasonable length. You want this fly to be, we've had the best luck with this probably in probably six to eight inch flies, maybe. So now, take, I'm going to do some pink for the top of this. It's going to be kind of a white and gray and pink fly. This fuchsia magnum flash about here. And take quite a bit of that. You probably want it's probably close to 20 strands for each stack of flash you're going to do. Staggering the ends of them. Tie them in about 60 40. Push them around the hook. Do a couple loose wraps. Make sure everything's spread around nice. Kind of tighten it down and fold the rest of these back. Tie that down. Perfect. And again, if you have any real straggler, real long ones, I take and trim them off. 
it's easy to want to tie these flies just enormous too, but sometimes I don't think they need to be as giant as you think they might need to be. Alright, let me use the hair clip here to hold these back. So then take, this is probably an unnecessary step, but I take and do two strands of lateral scale flash on each side of the fly. This makes it kind of gives it a nice definite line between top and bottom that way. I'm using red on this, you could use whatever color. You take and do your two on the opposite side as well. This is kind of how I start just about all of my pike flies. I do <clears throat> do a little bit of bucktail reverse tide, spread some flash around it. You can do different materials around it, but it seems like the flash is nice because it doesn't really absorb any water. It casts nice, it looks good, it's fairly durable. I don't really haven't found much of a reason to use anything anything other than this kind of platform for it and then just change the change the head. Take and trim your lateral scale like it just a little longer than the rest of the fly. So now we're gonna take some Terra's Magnum dubbing. And with this stuff, this is really cool dubbing. It's awesome for this kind of fly. But I take and just like keep stacking it and lining it up in your hands. Just so when you tie it down in the center, you're just going to kind of tie it on top of the hook right in the middle and then fold it back. So when you tie it down, you have a hold of each fiber that way. Take and tie that down. This stuff's about four inches long. It's pretty, pretty long. Makes a really good looking fly. So I'll do gray on the top and the bottom. Again, stack it, even it up so it looks nice. This is a, a material that it's easy to put too much of on your fly too, it seems like. It's easy to want to take a way too big of a clump and tie it in. Okay, and then I kind of just split that. Just, I mean, it depends how big you want your head. I mean, how much, how many stacks of this you do. I usually do two and two and then like we'll do on this fly I'm gonna stagger the stagger the top color on it so we'll switch it back around to the bottom and don't worry too much about like the thread sticking out here you're gonna glue an eye over that anyways so not too big of a deal okay got that and then we're gonna take some pink to finish this one off it's easier to do do more small clumps rather than one really big clump. It makes the fly just kind of flow a little nicer, I think. So I've got some pink here. Take and make sure you're not binding anything extra down. Kind of loose wrap and just make sure everything's where you need it to be. Fold it back. Fold the gray back. When I take and comb this out too, you'll get just a few fibers. It makes the fly look way better though. You kind of just get some of the straggler fibers out of it that way. It makes it kind of have a really nice taper too. Alright, so then we'll whip finish this. That's tight. Trim it off, and now we're just going to stick some zombie eyes on there. And there's a zillion different glues you can use for putting eyes on, but I we found that this Loctite gel control is as easy as it gets, and it works just as good as anything else. Take and clamp that out of the way. I, mean, I kind of make sure it's spread. Just so your fly has like a nice kind of flat profile in the water, it makes it swim better that way too. So I. Kind of pull it up and down. 
take this gel control put a pretty good size little dab of it on there a little more than that even and take and just stick your eye stick your eye on just kind of centered on the hook shank there and the same thing on the opposite side as well the eye is probably not a necessary component to this fly but it makes them look a lot nicer I'm way more confident fishing flies that have an eye on them it seems like than I am fishing flies that don't have eyes so that's it I've caught quite a few pike on this fly this year it's been a good just kinda all around pike fly it's pretty easy to tie to it, it adapts itself really well to different colored variations too I mean you can tie this fly in just about any color combo so Give them a try. Thanks.